Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of The Parts Bin. It's been a long time since we've A long these. time. Yeah, and today I'm pretty excited because this is a fun parts bin because I love turbos and we have a parts bin about turbos. Look at all these new turbos. I mean, we didn't have these years ago. Yeah. So, so these this, are all new. This is kind of about like for turbos for like your 2002 Dodge and older. Uh, this would be dropping in like all model years, 93, 89? Yeah, 89 to 93 first stints. That'll drop right in with a, a factory downpipe. Yeah. Because that's a factory HX35 outlet. And these ones are all an HX40 outlet, so you'll need to modify something for any truck you put this in. So first off, this has been a very, very popular turbo. This is our 6064. It gets a drop in, a direct drop in, for, like you said, every year, 89 through 2002. And it's a nice upgrade. The difference between this and this, these are our new ones. We're calling these our aggressor nines because these have a nine centimeter housing from HE351. It's a little bit different. So the big difference is the outlet, right? Yes. Because the HE351 is about 4.2 inches. These are four inch HX40 outlet. Yeah, which is very common in most second gen guys. If you've ever upgraded a turbo, uh, you may have an HX40 pipe, down pipe already. But if you don't, you're going to make one of these things. So on a factory stock HX35 turbo, there is this cast elbow. These things are hard to find. They're big dollars on eBay, used ones. They suck. New ones are over $300. So we made a cast stainless steel high flow version yep. for... And this is your standard HX35 outlet. So this will go right on the back of, of that turbo and goes right on the back of a factory downpipe. Or if you already have a four inch downpipe, they start with this bell mouth size yep. and then they flare up to four. So we have this great high flow elbow if you want and it looks beautiful. But that doesn't work on these HX40s, so you had to make another one, right? Yes. <laughs> so almost ready, I have yep. one in plastic. This is an HX40 outlet adapted still to the same factory HX35 there. So if you've already got like an aftermarket exhaust system, you don't want to do a whole downpipe. You can simply put this in place at the stock elbow and you can run all of these turbos. What are these turbos? Let's start right here. This is aggressor 60-9. So this is a 60 millimeter compressor, same compressor wheel as this one. The difference in this one is it has a larger turbine wheel. This is a 76 by 64 turbine wheel and this is a 76 by 67 turbine wheel. And all these have the same 67 turbine wheel outlet. We tried this wheel in this turbo right here when we were testing, trying to figure out the best drop in for the HX35. The difference is this is a 12 centimeter housing. These are nine centimeter housings. And this bigger wheel in this housing, we didn't love the performance. It was a little bit too laggy for us. It's kind of a bit hazy, not hazy, just, just a little slower than I wanted it. We thought the 64 got you the best spool up and, and performance for the, the lag ratio, so to speak. It's amazing, because the only difference, they're both a 76 millimeter inducer, just the exducer's three millimeters difference, but adding that extra trim, they call it, that extra time for the exhaust to work on the turbine wheel, it really made a big difference, and this is awesome. But once we go to the nine centimeter housing from the HE51 style housing, that problem disappeared. And so we had these And the things. 67 was, was better. This is awesome. This is like, a lot of guys will put a, like our 62, 67, our 351s in their, third, their second gen trucks because they work so well. This, this housing and this turbine wheel is like magic. There's a couple like magical combinations in the world and this is one of them. The 76, 67 turbine wheel in this nine cylinder housing is amazing. And so we did a towing video a long time ago with Griff and his truck and he did the HE51 and he's like, holy crap, this is amazing. So we decided we need to make one that actually has an HX35 outlet that can actually be dropping. Yeah, because normally these would be a forward discharge and you got to have a special charge pipe. Yes. This one will bolt right up to your factory, yeah. your factory intercooler pipe, which makes it kind of more stock appearing. And another thing about this that we changed, there's a couple different variations of this turbo on the market. The, the 351 hot side with the HX35 cold side. All the ones we've ever, we used to even sell them, and they had a spring gate where you didn't have actual, you know, wastegate with air pressure like standard canister. They had actually just, just a spring and they let drive pressure open the spring. And I will say for the top end performance, those are great. Like these are not gonna make more power than those. What we didn't like is in order to control the top end boost, it had to be too lazy down low. So it would creep the gate open too early. Where Cause this, you had to have the spring tension loose enough that the gate would blow open yes, on the top. Just from drive pressure alone. But it would blow open a little, it would just leak a little bit. It wasn't yeah. great. I people, personally played a lot with spring gates back on the Junker drag truck and I never got one that I liked. Yeah. The new ones are a little bit better, but still nothing's like a boost activated canister. Yeah, well this, this, is, this is so much better. We can actually make this work well. And I mean, this is not in day difference in my opinion. You put this on the truck versus a spring gate, it's gonna be way quicker, it's gonna spool faster. Like I say, top on power, not gonna change because they both need to 
open, but your drivability with this one's gonna be a little bit nicer in my opinion. The clockability too. <clears throat> a traditional HD351, that, yeah. that canister is mounted and it's cast into the compressor cover and so you can't really clock them. Yeah. That's why they made a spring gate is because they couldn't clock them. Well, we've mounted the wastegate off of the turbine housing side, so now the compressor cover can clock. So if you're making compounds yes. or you have some weird uh, but cool conversion or <laughs> something, you know, you've swapped a Cummins into yeah. something, your geometry's not the same, this turbo is great for you. So if you're looking for, you know, more power. This these... is going to be an awesome compound setup. We're going to build some compounds around this guy because it's going to be freaking amazing. And yeah, like you say, having this compressor cover be able to be clocked, which means we can loosen it and move it around relative to the turbine housing, which you cannot do on a 351. That's really, really cool. Now we did that on the Junker, this with a 480. Yeah. And yeah, uh, yeah we're, we're just shy of a thousand, like 10 horsepower shy. And that's been super reliable. <laughs> I mean, we have beat the crap out of that kit and it's just been awesome. Yeah, this paired with the 480 is a really good combination. So we have three sizes of this. The 60 millimeter, a 62 millimeter, and a 67 millimeter. This is kind of like your big dog. This is, a, this is a good 500 horsepower. These two turbos are very, very similar. This one's a little bit more because there's quite a bit more modification and custom stuff on this turbo than this one. But they're very similar. I would probably give the nod to performance to this one because it has a bigger turbine wheel, even though it's in that small housing. We actually ported the wastegate on these a little bit bigger for extra flow, especially for the compound guys. So, so factory 351 gate's a little small. These, we, you know, well, we blew up a lot of turbos figuring out what to yes. do here. <laughs> and the nice thing about this is the wastegate uh, wastegate's the entire engine, whereas this one, you only wastegate the back, is the back cylinders, the back six or front six? You can't wastegate the whole thing in, the, in this particular yeah, housing. You just get the back, the back six. So way better wastegating on these turbos compared to the H635 housing, uh, but it does come with a little bit of an, uh, an increased cost. So this is like a good 500. I don't know. I mean, I don't know the range. We've made like, 800 on this on a common rail. I don't think you can do that on a 12 valve or a VP truck, but this is a very potent single turbo. I mean, I'd say this is like 700 on a 12 valve probably. This one's more like a, what, Six. 600, and this is more of a 500. So and you can probably five, push six, them all higher, just you're gonna do that at risk of, you know, hurting stuff. Like this turbo here, this is designed for towing an awesome EGT control. If you push this 60 millimeter too hard, you're gonna blow it up. So I really wanna educate people on this because in order to get that awesome EGT control, I want that big turbine wheel. But that big turbine wheel puts a lot of power in that small 60 millimeter compressor wheel. Basically, you can make more exhaust energy than you have compressor to, to handle down. it, and you can <clears throat> overspeed it. Yeah. And in testing, it's pretty easy to tell when you overspeed it. The back of the compressor wheel looks like an orange peel because yes. the aluminum starts actually, sloughing. Yeah, actually it's starts so migrating fast. the outside of the wheel. And so if your goal is over 500 horsepower, go to the 62 or the 67. This is 500 horsepower and less. Yes, it will make more, but it's, if you want more, just get the turbo that fits your power goals because it'll last a lot longer, be more reliable, it won't strain in the side of the road, and it'll be awesome. And finally, we have our 62, 65. This has been a really fun turbo for me. You can see it, this is a little bit bigger again. You kind of see the compressor housings and these are all the same size, and that's like bigger. So that's an S300 based turbocharger. And that one has the 65 millimeter uh, turbine wheel. So this would be more like a Borg Warner style turbine yes. wheel. These are all whole set style turbine wheels. Yes. Borg Warner style compressor cover. And the 62 millimeter compressor wheel. We tested that versus this one in a test and that one ran out of fuel. Like we have not yet maxed out this turbo. This is a 65 millimeter turbine wheel and the difference between this and most of your 65 millimeter variants is this has a .70 housing, not a .80. Early on, we actually offered a .80 and it was a little bit lazy, so we actually had to custom make a housing for this in the .70, and that just changed the whole characteristics of this turbo. It's now, it is not as quick to spool as any of these, don't get me wrong. You are stepping up in uh, turbo lag and also reliability. The shafts are a little bigger, bearings yeah. are a little bigger, so this is more of a beat on it, workhorse type turbo, but it's still mild in comparison yeah. to some of these huge S300s that are lazy yes. lag pigs. This is an awesome, this is the best S300 I've personally ever yeah. ran. I believe single. that's a 600 horsepower charger. I mean, we've taken about five, 550 and we were just pretty much out of fuel. And so we thought, man, it's, it's still good to go. So it was cleaning up all the fuel around 550 horsepower by itself. So I, I believe that's a, a north of 550 horsepower charger and we'll have some tests on that soon. All these turbos you're gonna see on some testing here pretty quick. We're gonna go through each one, get on the dyno, do some towing tests, really show you guys how they work, what RPM range you're happy in so you can know which turbo is right for you. And uh, yeah, with these elbows, it will make them all very easy to install whatever exhaust system you have. 
Because when this is out, you'll be able to buy this elbow if you want, put it with this turbo, and now you don't need a new downpipe. Yep. Or any of these. Or you can buy a new HX40 style downpipe. Yeah, either Those way, are readily it's all available. good. Um, the other thing we talked about was the paint. That one's got that sleek mm. paint job there. Yes. What's the difference here? So they're all they're all available in either the raw or the coated. So this is like a really high-end red sparkle awesome paint job that we do here, and it looks freaking amazing. But it does take some time and it takes materials, so this is more expensive. That's about $100 difference between the raw and the coated as of right now. That may change in the future, but right now it's about $100 difference. Um, but yeah, you can get any of these turbos, either the raw or the coated form, depending on how you want your truck bay to look. So anyway, I'm super excited about all these turbos. This one has been amazing. I've, we've had nothing but great reviews on this one. These guys are going to be amazing because I just, I mean, I know these are awesome. The tests are going to be super fun. They run really, really well. And having this true, you know, wastegate canister rather than spring grate is going to make these turbos just that much better. So anyway, guys, these are the turbos for your pre-2002 Dodge trucks. You can put them anywhere you want, but they're kind of going to be pretty close to dropping for those guys. There's one little tidbit oh, I need to correct you. On those early first gens, oh, if they're yeah. a non-intercooled truck, they have a tiny little weird oh, hose discharge yeah. over the top. So that technically is going to drop in on those pre-91 trucks that are not uh, intercooled. Okay, okay. But you should run an intercooler because it's way better. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And, and they're available. You can just bolt one onto your truck. So, so, if but, you're bringing your turbo, get an intercooler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like adding another turbo almost. <laughs> it really is. They do amazing. Intercoolers are incredible. So anyway, guys, that's this episode of the part been, Parts Bin. I hope you enjoyed it. Turbos are always fun. If you have any questions about any of these turbos, give us a call here at Power Driven Diesel. We can help you out. And, uh, or PowerDrivenDiesel.com. PowerdrivenDiesel Check it out. Thanks. We're trying to not.